morning, everyone, for the latest edition of On the Sidelines. I'm your host, Adam Biar. We're here today with uh, uh, Mr. Clarence Goins, who's running for the North Carolina House District, 43rd District. And uh, we know the primaries this year has been moved up to March the 3rd. Uh, in previous years, it was in May. That's right. And we wanted to have a chance to introduce many of our candidates to you. Uh, we're interviewing the, the North Carolina House candidates. Uh, they have primaries this year. And as I said, this, I want to say good morning to Mr. Goins. Uh, for coming in and and sharing his himself with you, so Mr. Goins, how are you doing? Thanks I'm doing good, and I okay. appreciate the opportunity, uh, Mr. Adam, for bringing me out and being able to get a chance to speak to the audience here. So thank you so much That's for great. the opportunity. And uh, is this your first time running? It is not. I actually I ran for the congressional, the infamous ninth congressional race uh, back in 2018. Uh, that was a big race to undertake, but uh, the way the lines were drawn. No one on this side of the state of North Carolina was running, and we have uh, a, quite a bit of a population to where we should have some type of representation on this side of the district. So that's what piqued my interest um, to do so, and I just felt that Cumberland County uh, as a whole was not being represented. So uh, I took, took the plunge and uh, with well thought out plan and, uh, and was able to, to do that race. Uh, unfortunately, I did not make the primary but I had a really great time running that race, met a lot of people across the district, and so uh, that's what happened with the ninth district. Okay, so now here we are in 2020 and yep. you're back in it again. Yes, sir. Okay, where does this, this motivation to serve come from? So uh, I am a Cumberland County born native. Uh, I come from, as you know, my grandfather you know, farmed Owen Drive before it was Owen. Uh, and, and so we're, we're from Cumberland County, so I'm very partial to Cumberland County, to Fayetteville. Uh, grew up here, my wife is from here. We do live in Eastover uh, area, but to me it's still all Cumberland County, Fayetteville. Cumberland County, right. uh, and so I'm very partial to Fayetteville. You know, I work in banking, and I've been in banking for more than 18 years, and I see and I deal a lot with a, with a lot of transient people who come into our area, and you know, sometimes they're not able to see what Fayetteville, Cumberland County really is. They're usually just sidelined to certain areas you know, of the county. It's unfortunate, so I'm a big advocate for our community. Um, so I come from you know, family who have done things in politics before. Uh, we just have a servant's heart. We, you know, we grew up in an area where family was just all around, try to take care of one another, and uh, I like to take that into, you know, into my life growing up and served the citizens of Cumberland County and Fayetteville area and North Carolina. Now your opponent is, is also well known in the, uh, in the area and um, so how important is it for you to, uh, for people to know more about you? Sure, yeah it's very important. Uh, my opponent <coughs> Diane Wheatley, uh, she, a lot of respect for what she has accomplished uh, in the community. She was on school board, uh, I believe when I was in school and she served, I think, a term with the county commissioner. And, and you know, she has a, a record of, of serving, and, and that is good, it's, it's commendable. Um, I feel that, you know, the next generation needs to step up and, and serve the community. Um, I am running on the Republican ticket. I am a conservative at heart. I believe you can be conservative, uh, despite what party you belong to, depending on your morals and, and how you live your life. And uh, I believe in order for North Carolina to have a conservative future, it needs to come from the next generation. All right. Now, what have you found in, in, in this running for, running for office? What have you found that's been most important in terms of what people are looking for sure. coming out of Raleigh? Sure. So uh, when you live in this community, uh, you come to experience different things, especially with the transient uh, population that has came through our area. So Fayetteville, Cumberland County, North Carolina is not the same as when I was growing up. It's, it's changed quite a bit. We're facing with a lot of different issues that, uh, that my kids will have to live through once they become you know, of age. Um, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is the issue of abortion. That's a long, long running debate, long running issue, uh, but North Carolina as Bible Belt or conservative uh, morals that, that it might be, we still have 
uh, or abortion laws where you can have an abortion up to 20 weeks without any medical concerns whatsoever. That's alarming to me, uh, being a man you know, of faith and with morals, uh, I just believe that is, that is asinine to, to be able to just not give human life uh, the attention that it is. And um, 20 weeks is just, is just too, too long. My wife and I, we have triplets, have two boys and a girl. We were faced with that decision to uh, downsize one of the, one of the kids. Um, her OB is a doctor here in town, a uh, phenomenal doctor, uh, and we were able to get his second opinion, and, uh, and, and the, the, other, the specialist doctor was just on us to, to downsize on any medical conditions whatsoever. So uh, because of our faith, because of our you know, morals, uh, without any medical condition, we decided to, of course, have our children. So now we have you know, all three of our children. I couldn't imagine having life and going with downsizing one of those children. And so once I become in legislation, I would morally downsize the term from 20 weeks down as low as I can get. Of course, with the exception of medical concerns, rape and incest. But that's one of the big things that I'm a big advocate about. In Fayetteville, what I do see growing up here, another issue, uh, I believe human trafficking is a big issue for North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We now have the first human trafficking court here in Cumberland County that's the first in North Carolina. And we are making progress in that area. But as you can tell, and if it's happening here in Fayetteville, it's happening in Charlotte, it's happening in Raleigh, it's happening right. in Durham, those bigger populations. You can go down 301 and at any given time, you know, there are buses that are unloading and that are picking up people by groups. And a lot of times they're young girls. Uh, I go to church downtown. And so I'm able to see that. Anyone who, who travels and who is from Fayetteville, you, most likely you're gonna go through downtown. And with us putting a lot of investments into our downtown area, which is great, uh, we need to, to look at that. Um, go to the Wilco Hess station, and probably two or three times out of the week, you'll see a white unmarked bus. And you know we do have legislation that deals with network transport companies. That bus should go right to that bus uh, station that we built, that we invested, mm -hmm. and check in. When you take multiple groups like that, there needs to be some type of checks and balances to what's coming our in our community. Our mayor, Mitch Colvin, has um, put that, uh, gave attention to that. Mm -hmm. We have an influx of people coming from uh, New York into our town, and um, that is, I guess, not wanted up in, in New York. I'm not really for sure the whole reasoning for that, but I know Mitch, Mayor Mitch Colvin has given um, some type of attention to that. And um, I think we definitely need to do that because we have a very, uh, we have, we have a, a lot of activity with, with transporting and with human trafficking in the area. Historically speaking, there's, there's always been a, in this area a disconnect between the, between the local officials and the state delegation. Absolutely. Um, how can we resolve that? It's going to take the representatives to be involved in the community. Um, I'm very involved in community in things that might not give a lot of attention. Uh, you know, my wife and I have invested in downtown. She has her business there. So uh, down in the Mason Street area, you know, we're very involved in making sure that area is kept is kept up. It's you know, attention's being given to. Our my church is located downtown uh, in an area where we have the B Street Coalition. Um, you know, having representatives being involved in that, uh, especially with the growth of what downtown's going through, we, we have to have local represent our local representatives, whether Republican, Democrat, Green Party, Blue Party, whatever, need to be involved in our local community and have being able to be accessible to those areas. I think that's a big thing. I don't think we have a lot of accessibility as far as just local tangible access to our representatives. And, well, again, being on the same page, because what happens in Raleigh affects, it affects us. Does. So it I would think does. of being on the same page. And so you, you'll be committed to working with the local, local delegation. Absolutely. You know, uh, one of the things, you know, we had, uh, my wife and I told you she has home business, and we uh, purchased a, it's a historic house in downtown Fayetteville. We were flooded with Matthew. Uh, a lot of people, some people know it, some people don't, but uh, Mason Street wasn't given that much attention, and it still is not given that much attention. 
Uh, we had 10 feet of water outside of a house that never flooded. And the house has been there since the late 1800s, but according to the records and everything of that nature, it never flooded, even with the great flood in the 40s. Um, but we lost 10 feet, we lost everything. Mm -hmm. And we did have um, some people from city council to come and look and gave you know um, support as far as uh, what had happened, some moral support. But uh, we have an issue down there. And uh, it's, I think that's gonna have to come up from the state level as well. Um, you know, our, our water system here in this area with all this development going on, that area needs to be attention to. Now with Florence, we, were not, we did not receive flooding down on Mason Street like Matthew did. But um, there were some precautionary things that we were able to work with the uh, city and the, and the county in that area to do to prevent what we felt happen with Matthew. But yeah, there needs to be attention to it. Uh, representatives need to pay attention to the area instead of, you know, uh, just having a few politicians that just kind of come in and go out when it happens. So we have a real serious, serious issue down there. All right. Um, being in the primary, people have to decide, the Republicans have to decide which candidate they want to send forth yes, sir. to the general election. Um, what, I guess, distinguish yourself from your opponent. Sure. Please. So, um, yeah, so I'm a younger uh, person uh, by a few years, and, uh, you know, people talk about experience, but neither myself or my opponent has had any legislative experience. Right. Neither one of us had made law, you know, um, so the experience I do bring is that in my 18 years of uh, in banking, I have had so much exposure to various businesses, different industries. Um, I have uh, been able to see what affects those businesses. Um, we are, my wife is self-employed, so I understand that from a self-employed perspective. I come from entrepreneurs, uh, as you know. So I understand what small businesses uh, have to deal with. Uh, again, I understand what different industries affect. You know, if, if, if A happens, then B is going to happen. Um, I'm from this area, so I know what uh, the constituents in this area, um, you know, want and need. Uh, families from here in this new 43rd district, I'm pretty much have ties to about probably 75 to 80 percent of the district. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's very important. I think representatives need to be elected based on the ties that they have in the community and not just political ties. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, we need to have someone who will show compassion. Um, as far as the nomination for the Republican Party, yes, I am running for the Republican Party. I believe that party, whether they're Republican or Democrat, needs to elect candidates that support the party. Uh, I am the candidate who has and always will support uh, the Republican Party because I believe in the platform, I believe in the history of the Republican Party, and uh, I do not um, believe that you know, those who come into the party because of political reasoning um, that and just because of experience, not saying my opponent's doing that. I'm just politicians like to like the ebb and flow, switch parties, or support other people against the parties. And I just I I believe that you need to know who you're dealing with, and you need to know for a nomination for a party that they are consistently um, supportive of that party, oh, very good. whether they're Republican or Democrat. Gotcha. I understand, and and I agree with that. Yep. Um, Clarence, I appreciate you taking the time to come with us, come and speak with us today, and yeah, uh, I wish you the best going in the future. Thank you. I do and appreciate it. Hopefully we'll have a chance to talk again. Absolutely. Previous to the uh, general election. Absolutely. All right. I wish as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for tuning in to uh, On the Sidelines, and we hope that uh, you will continue to tune in as we uh, interview additional candidates in the future. Thank you very much.